Hi guys, Tony here. Today I wanted to talk about cerebralizing. It's been quite a while since I've done this peptide. First of all, I'll go into its research and use, and then I'll go into the reasons why I've done it, and then talk about my results. So cerebralizing is a bioengineered peptide. It's used for things like acute stroke, dementia, brain injuries, and it's even had research with autism, children with autism, treating that, even ADHD and depression. So cerebralizing massively boosts BDNF, which stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factors. I mean, you get a boost from exercise, but it's nothing in comparison to doing cerebralizing. And one commonality with people with dementia is they get a fall in BDNF. There's actually a gene that encodes for this BDNF, and some people have mutations in this, and this can lead to things like poor learning or um, a re reduced uh, neuroplasticity. So particularly people with that mutation and that gene, they're less likely to take up new things. They become more rigid, especially as they get older because you get less and less neuroplasticity anyway, but these people have an accelerated amount and it's strongly linked to a cognitive decline. Fortunately, myself, I have a normal cognitive decline looking at not just this genes, there's a few other genes as well. So cerebralizin has a very low molecular mass, so it's easily it crosses the blood-brain barrier. And there's all kinds of different dementias where you've got vascular dementia and obviously you've got your normal Alzheimer's and cerebralizin can help with both of them. Because say with strokes, you have mini vessel blockages and cerebralizin helps with both uh, oxidative stress, uh, you know, calming down at the endothelial lining that's been damaged from this oxidative stress. And having a damaged endothelial lining causes the uh, the vessels to constrict and can eventually block, which obviously that's what causes a stroke. And just general inflammation in the brain is strongly associated with things like dementia, which cerebralizing has great anti-inflammatory properties. And I'll get into this in a bit because this is one of the reasons why I've done it. So yes, cerebralizing calms that uh, swelling of the endothelial lining and this means normal blood flow can be restored and those inflamed endothelial cells can stop leaking inflammatory cytokines. So I mentioned about neuroplasticity and this is something it really does help with. This is one of the reasons why I first did it around two years ago. As I mentioned earlier that uh, it gets harder and harder to learn things and this is down to uh, your decreased neuroplasticity. And this is also linked to depression that's why when people do cognitive behavioral therapy they'll do it with antidepressants too and so the combination of two of them is stimulating a new neuro pathways and this can cause new ways of thinking that's why sometimes people use psychedelics because that can uh, cause new synapses to be formed but yeah in essence you just retrain your brain to no longer have these negative thought patterns that are not conducive to having a happy life so on top of creating new synapses uh, cerebralizing also amplifies angiogenesis which is increased blood flow to certain areas of the brain so that'd be one thing to take into consideration is if you had a family history of brain tumors, then you may not want to have, you know, angiogenesis in the brain. But it is very rare to get brain traumas, but just keep that in mind. And there's even a test where you can actually measure your stem cells to see how many divisions you're having per year. And that would be an indication that, say, your body's not functioning the right way if there's a high amount of stem cell divisions then uh, that would actually indicate, you know, if you're right in the 90th percentile, there's, there could be some kind of growth going inside your body, and that would be an indication to get a liquid biopsy. So, and if, you, if you're generally healthy, you keep inflammation low, then uh, the, the chance of just getting cancer in general are massively reduced. Another thing that neuroplasticity helps with is addiction. So if you've got these rigid um, compulsions, then uh, there's been some evidence that uh, cerebralizing can just help with that, just to kind of change those patterns that uh, you have, say, no control over, or you feel you have no control over, but you really do. But it's just new ways of thinking, and that's what it can help with. So cerebralizin helps with neurogenesis and things like drinking excessively can cause that. I mentioned about things like obviously strokes can too, of course. And that gets me onto the reasons why I've done it. So I don't drink alcohol anymore. I have done since my last cycle of cerebralizin. I've done two previously to now. But one thing I do have is Zoplicone. I did during 2022. I massively cut down on them. I have increased it a little bit but uh, still nowhere near as much as I was having back in, say, 2021 with Zoplicones. And this sleeping pill is really toxic for things like your memory, but also neuroplasticity. 
So that's my main reason for doing it. Obviously, having increased BDNF is great because I'm always learning too. I'm just an ever-evolving person. So taking in new information, learning new skills, it's, I just think it's really is, is great for that. On my sofa, I only did a cycle of 10 mil and I did that twice a week for two and a half weeks. So a small cycle, I think that's the, the, like the bare minimum that you can do. Uh, ideally, you do more. It depends on your need. My need is quite low compared to some people. I think in the past it was higher, but now, yes, I'm still doing Zoplicones, but I wasn't, I'm not doing them as many as, as what I was doing back in 2021. I'm really concentrating on sleep more than, more than I used to. I, in this new year, I have been getting a little bit less. And then so doing the cerebralizer and that's kind of repairing that damage from not also getting enough sleep because you get a lot of um, toxin build up when you build up sleep debt. So uh, yeah, and it can help with that inflammation in the brain. And this is something I particularly have a high amount of. So doing that true age test, the one I mentioned earlier, where you can identify cancer risk early by your stem cell divisions per year, but also uh, it can you can identify inflammation. And C-reactive protein is an indication of inflammation. It does, if you just do a normal blood test, it goes up and down due to things like you can have infections, things like that. But when you're measuring it from methylation, it's giving a lot much longer trend. And the DNA methylation at C-reactive protein uh, in this test is particularly indicative of neuronal inflammation. So on top of doing the cerebralizing, I've been just yeah trying to focus on sleep a bit more and also trying to cut down on things like foods that are particularly high in pesticides. And I'm also taking things to lower the inflammation, say with, uh, you've got NAC, which is great for that, and TMG, trimethylglycine, they're both, uh, they're, as a combo, they're really effective for lowering inflammation. So what I noticed while I've been on cerebralizing, uh, the sleep, I, I noticed it more when I first did it because I, at the same time I was on that somorolin, so something that boosts growth hormone, like a peptide that boosts it. I'm not, I'm not doing that in the moment because you know it's not something you want to do unless you really have got low levels because when, when, when you get growth hormone, uh, if you get that too high, then that's negative for aging. So yeah, I will measure it and see if I ever am low. I mean, it's not saying you can use these things, but it's just you know, only when you really need to. So in this cycle, it's not particularly helped with sleep, but then I am under more stress than normal because I'm moving house. It has helped with recovery. I, I go tend to train in the morning and I've really pushed myself and then straight away I'm back to normal. I can just function. There's no kind of like um, getting my head together, like a kind of a bit of a drop in energy. I can just keep on going. So it does help in that regard. I mentioned about stress and funny enough, I haven't actually been as stressed as I thought I would be. I've been at my same house now for just over eight years and the last time I found it so stressful moving. And this time, not so much. And cerebralizing can induce a morphogen called SHH, or some people nickname it Sonic Hedgehog. And this morphogen SHH induces the expression of this microRNA 1792. And this is particularly expressed in developmental periods of your life. And it's been linked with things like uh, decreased depression and anxiety. So uh, yeah, it, this it has multiple ways that can help with depression and anxiety cerebralizing. So the long term aim is to really just cut down on the zoplicone because they're just this terrible for neuroplasticity. And I've noticed it with people who abuse them, people I know that take more than one, then you can really you the next day you can really see that their their memory's foggy. I've I've come across people that have forgotten where they've parked their car. So yeah, that's obviously if you do too many, but even doing one because that it still has a negative effect and it's linked with Alzheimer's, all these kinds of things. And since doing my last cycle of cerebralizing, I actually feel like I'm say about 90% cured from ADHD. I'm not going to say cerebralizing is the only cause, it's a synergistic thing, but there's all kinds of other things like I've massively improved my uh, gut microbiome. And this particular test that my company Epic Genetics offers, it actually breaks down certain uh, associations with certain diseases and mine was particularly high in ADHD symptoms. So that's another positive. I don't have to take my Concerta or some people know it as Ritalin for ADHD and that, that has definitely positive effects for your long-term health. There's been well-known people that say they've cured themselves of even like uh, high-functioning autism, uh, Dave Asprey, and I believe he does all kinds of things. I think he's done cerebralizing, but quite a multitude of peptides and race tams, but he, he says he's actually cured himself of it. So I'm not saying cerebralizing is some kind of magic bullet, but it's meant to be one of the most powerful things you can do for, as I mentioned earlier, brain-derived neurotrophic factors and 
yeah, it's the one drawback with it is the amount of volume you have to do. As I said, I was doing it 10 mil a time. So that's that's what makes it is miracle drug. It's that's what holds it back from wide scale use. It's just the implications of having to administer it. Remember, cerebralizing is a prescribed drug in the EU, so it's possible to get a prescription, although from a private clinic. And it would most likely be this Austrian made Ever Pharma brand. So I myself, I did it in both shoulders each time. So a 10 mil ampule, I spread it over into two five mil syringes and then injected both shoulders. And the reason why I went for the shoulder is I've heard some talk of you're more likely to get more of the cerebralizing and circulating to the brain. And doing it twice a week, it's not too onerous of a task. And it's not that painful, think about it. You don't have to go that deep because your shoulder, there's typically, there's not much that much fat. So the actual depth, you need to obviously get it into the muscle but it doesn't have to be super deep. I mentioned about memory and that this can be damaged from the zoplicones. And I think that that does do a little bit, you know, your short-term memory can be affected. My mind's definitely improved over this last couple of years. So that's my verdict on cerebralizing. I think there's a lot of applications for it. Obviously you need to do your research on this kind of stuff, but if you wanted to find out more, the company I get it from is Cosmic Nootropic. They've been around a long time. They get pharmaceutical grade, uh, different types of nootropics. So if you wanted to visit Cosmic Tropic and find out more about Cerebralizing, then check out the show notes below. There's a link there. And I've got great customer feedback. And touching on that, we can look at the feedback for Cerebralizing in general. And it's actually got 4.6 out of 5 stars, and that's based on 272 reviews. So I mean, look at this excellent product. Wasn't sure how Cerebralizing would work, but I have bought multiple times and will purchase more. Another one, greatest peptide of all time. I've stopped biting my fingernails, all nervous behaviors without even trying. It killed my anxiety. Wow. Another one, amazing. Love the product. I noticed a huge difference with my memory. It's like my brain works again. Here's another one. It works. Probably the number one thing that's helped my depression and anxiety. Hi, I tried both Cerebralize and then Nobin right after. Dementia runs on both sides of my family. I noticed I was super forgetful and it was difficult to form coherent sentences. I work with customers and manage a team, so my communication needs to be on point. So I decided to try some new things to help. I'm not sure if it was Cerebralizing or Noben that helped lift my fog away. Now it's a natural flow to talk with little effort to think about what uh, to say or respond. I feel my confidence back and my stress levels have dropped. I have my life back. Thank you. So it does appear to help people. Obviously, the, what puts them off is the injection because it's a big volume. But if you do your research, like I said, if you're going to do 10 mil ampules, spread it over two and make sure you sanitize and you just need to do research about injecting, not hitting veins, things like that. So you have to find the right spot, like I say, the nice meaty part of the shoulder. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.